And joining us now with a closer look at the European debt crisis and how it affects the U.S. is Michael Santoli. He's senior editor of Barron's Magazine. Great to have you with us, Michael. Last week's stocks here were up 7%. Do you think the hopes for this week are too high that the European Union is going to figure something out? I don't know that they're too high. I think last week the markets were celebrating a very short-term kind of stopgap measure with the central banks essentially trying to keep the uh, uh, the banks afloat with easy uh, access to cheap dollars. Uh, but I do think right now people are building toward this idea that this is this year's last best hope for some kind of lasting solution. Unfortunately, what seems on paper to be the simplest thing, which is equivalent to what our Federal Reserve did would be for the European Central Bank to go up and in an unlimited way buy up the debt of the troubled countries still doesn't seem like it's on the table so it's going to be more of a patched together solution right not not not, not a final solution it is something that's still going to here and there and last for quite a while. Exactly, and something that requires all these different countries potentially to sort of rewrite the original treaty. Uh, Really what they're focused on here is kind of solving one of the shortcomings of the euro uh, in the first place, which was that all these independent countries can essentially cheat and run big budget deficits even though they've agreed not to. And then obviously fall back on France and Germany and their stronger economies to keep them moving forward. One of the solutions put in place last week that helped our markets here is the fact that bank Banks around the world, central banks around the world, including the Federal Reserve, are ponying up money mm-hmm. for the ECB to then give to the banks. Right. How much of the solution is that part? That really is about a, a more short-term, sort of making sure on an overnight basis that the banks don't have to sell assets and scrounge uh, for financing. So that's really not something that's going to get us uh, to a place where we're satisfied that the euro problem has been solved. Uh, it's not a matter of putting capital into the banks. It's just sort of keeping them running. So I really do think that it's going to be uh, more of a political solution that has to happen here. So this is Merkozy doing this together, <laughs> as, they're, as, they're, as, as they're called, Angela Merkel and Nicolas Sarkozy. Everyone have full faith and confidence in them that it's those two leading the charge and they'll get it done. Well, I think so. But, of course, they're each also beholden to their own citizens. I mean, let's think of it in U.S. terms. We had our own Congress mandate a committee of, its, of itself mm-hmm. to come up with a, a budget, a structural budget solution. It didn't do it. That's now we're it asking other parliaments to listen uh, to some extra national authority, potentially, or some other countries in terms of how they're going to run their budget finances. It's not necessarily an easy sell. But I do think the markets have kind of thrown enough of a tantrum at this point that I think everyone's very serious about trying to uh, to comply with what they're what they're looking for. Let's hope so. Yeah, Michael. All right. Thank Thank you very much.